Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. So, I'm just getting things ready at the moment. Just sharing the links of the, well, across the discords. Uh, we'll be ready to go in about two minutes. Just getting the shares. There we go, that'll do it. Okay. Hello there, AT. How you doing there, my friend? So we'll get things up and going, then. The other stream thingy. There's another stream thingy? Hmm. One second, let's take a look at that. I do hope that I'm like on another thing, uh, because actually, let's see, how do I go to that? Um, live control room, let's take a look at that. Ah, okay. So it's the first time I've ever used this sort of thing, so I'm gonna go and uh, see how that works. Um. Hmm. Right, okay. Uh, that's, yeah, it's the first time I've ever used that. It's actually, it seems like a new feature. I don't know particularly how it works. Uh, I need to figure out how you actually, like, <laughs> make these things, because it's like, this is what I'm seeing here at the moment. I don't know how... Okay, here we go. Ah, right, okay. Um... I suppose I'll delete this one here. There we go. Yeah, it, it seems like something new. I don't know exactly how this works. So... Yeah. Ooh, that's really cool, though. Okay, um... <laughs> I suppose we'll use this side, then. That looks alright. Yeah, nice and new. Pretty awesome, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. Let's make that a little bigger. Yep, there we go. Okay, so let's take a look at the game then, shall we? It's going to be a mightily uh, sight in turn, really. I mean, really, Jesus. <laughs> we were chatting in the other stream, right, okay. I think there's only the one stream now, so that should be alright. But I think in the future then, uh, at least I'll know a little bit more how this new uh, sort of service works, then, so that's pretty cool. But I... So we have a lot ongoing here. I'm still hoping, I'm still praying that Akagi and Kage will remain undetected. I'm um, hoping that we'll have success in the South of China Battle of Wuchao. I think we should be able to manage it. We do have three divisions, albeit one is battered. The other two are fairly fresh, so that should be quite nice. Uh, you may be able to go into that rather than start a new stream. Um, see, I think... I've, I don't know. I'm honestly not entirely sure. Uh, other channel break or something. Um, I deleted the other stream. I've, uh, yeah, first time using the new stream and sorts of services, so yeah, I'm really getting used to that. Um, so the other one should all be here in this one spot now. Hello there, Talon, how you doing, my friends? Right then, so let's get into this, shall we? So, welcome there, AT, Chroma, Borian, Dobri, Alexander, Borian again, Commissar Roach, how you doing there, my friends? So for those of you unaware, Commissar Roach is a fantastic uh, content creator, definitely check him out. Carl, how you doing there, as ever? Uh, hoping to see more allied ships go down, yeah, that would be quite nice. Okay, then, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual name then, shall we? So it's 15 we're looking for. <laughs> the Mark 14 factory has been shot for treason. <laughs> you know what, I really wish I could have seen it when he actually saw the name of the save. Can you just imagine that? He'd be like, okay, why, why, why is this called? Uh, <laughs> but no explosion. Man, that was a great name. Absolutely just... Oh, I just ice on the cake name that hit but no explosion. But that that's beautiful. I'm really glad to turn him. We're winning the uh, psychological war here. Hello then, Joseph. I'm going to have to sleep soon. I need to ask though. Have you thought of the fact that a two to one kill ratio of his aircraft or is it can more of his uh, ships won't matter to the Allies? See, this is one that we really need to discuss actually. Uh, we'll, we'll discuss this question before we actually go into the actual save here. So, the way you have to imagine this is, and um, I actually heard it really um, said quite eloquently 
Uh, I'm listening to a new audio book called uh, Nemesis. I can't remember the actual author at the moment. I'm going to have to order the book in the physical form. Well, in the physical form. Uh, but yes, uh, the way he says it, well, the way it's said in the book there, is you'll have to sort of imagine that um, people think of these nations at their mightiest. You know, obviously, like, you take a look at the US. Obviously, in World War II, you think of the US when it's just fleet after fleet, vast... Uh, manufacturing capabilities, vast armed forces, but at the start of the war, obviously things were quite different. Obviously, you did have the Pacific Fleet and you had the Atlantic Fleet. Uh, sorry, your fleet. So, obviously, at the start of the war, the uh, US Navy was actually weaker. At, I suppose you could say weaker in a sense that the Imperial Japanese Navy did uh, have a superiority. I suppose when it comes down to like the carriers and equipment sort of thing, but they did have a superiority in numbers, I would say. So it's a very interesting question. So obviously, as you say, uh, what do we think about the fact that uh, new ships are going to be constantly made? Well, the thing is, uh, they will they will be produced and they will be replaced. But the thing is, they're not going to be in the same position. They will not have the position that they were in before. If we can really push the Allied forces back into a position of which we can really sort of uh, bar that entry from Asia and from our economic sphere, then uh, we still have a fight in chance. But yeah, he may very well receive, I don't know, let's say, eight, is it something like something ridiculous, like 80 escort carriers, uh, tens of fleet carriers. He'll have a lot of those bad boys. But at the end of the day, we're not there yet. And he has to actually make it through 1942 before we even get to 1943, so it's one of those things, isn't it? You've got to learn how to walk before you can run. Hello there, Caspen. How you doing there, my friends? What's up there, Chainsaw? G-Man, diligent. Joseph, indeed. Hello there, John. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I mean, that's right. I mean, the S-boats, I think... I don't know if they're Dutch, or I don't know if they're actually, like, Americans. Uh, but I know the S-boats do... I think they do have a different uh, torpedo. So let's see how this goes, then. I'll have to listen to that um, part of the book again. I, I do need to get a physical uh, copy of that book, actually. But I thought it was really fitting. Hello there, Hanamia. How you doing, my friend? Oh, thank you very much there, Diligent. That's really appreciated. Right, here we go. So we have a reaction here. Uh, Task Force 111 encounters the enemy. Yep, so this is our two heavy cruiser force. Allied naval, uh, naval forces surprised. Ooh. Range closes to nine... Uh, sorry, 6,000 yards. Getting a little bit uh, sighted here. Yep, so I think we'll have a pretty good run of things here. This is a nice uh, way to start. His losses will match until about 1943. <laughs> Yet 158 US carriers. Eesh. Yeah, it would be nice to actually see some of our uh, submarines hit here. But this is a nice way for us to start out here. We'll be able to go and rearm more than likely Babaldoab, if not at Babaldoab, either Saigon or Camran Bay. I'd very much like to clear Manila or Mines, but that's not going to be possible until Clark- oh, sorry, until Bataan has fallen. Okay. But this is nice, it's a good way to start. I mean, obviously these are small fry, they're not going to matter too particularly much, but at the end of the day, every ship, every bottom that we put on the actual ocean floor is going to hurt him, it's going to affect him. Uh, what we're trying to do really here is um, engineer a circumstance in which he's going to find it very difficult to actually begin to mount um, offensive operations into 1942 and 1943, ideally. Because he just won't have that sort of logistical capability, he won't have the actual capacity, if, yeah, if that makes any sense. But this is good practice for our actual ships here. It's good practice. Uh, so this is taking place at night, I do believe, here. So yeah, look at that. Combat down to 2,000 yards here. I mean, this is just... This is absolutely just close combat. Yeah, they have no chance here. Very good. I mean, these are 12.7 centimeter guns. Yep, Petrus goes down. Was that 13.2? Yeah, 13.2 millimeter there. We're just using everything here at close range. <laughs> Potato boat, yeah. Oh, so the S-boat is a US, right, okay. Critical damage, man. Now, what does interest me is, it's like I did re-watch a little bit of the last stream. And just, well, I'm, well, the uh, last stream part one. 
We did hear something hit a mine, and I really don't know whether it was something a mine hitting a mine or whether it was some um, allied ship hitting a mine, but it's rather interesting. I don't think we had anything else hit a mine, so it'd be nice to think it might have been something allied. And Lone Vampole, how are you doing there, my friend? Yeah, it's nice of the HG to provide you with moving targets. <laughs> I mean, this is a group of four, so I wonder if uh, the cargo ships have split in, well, split up and headed out in different directions. Um, potentially so, but uh, this is good. Good practice from Garmi and Kuma. Yep, another ship there goes down. Very good. Okay. Yeah. We'll have to rearm them, but that's easy enough done. I mean, this is a 2,000 yards. This is just absolute turkey shoot here. Yep, there we go. Oof, can't find a lot of munitions expended. But that's fine. We can have them rearmed. It'll take a couple days uh, for them to be rearmed. Uh, but we do have a very strong escort force around here. So it's interesting here to see that uh, the Japanese launched long lance torpedoes at 8,000 yards before allies detect Japanese. Now, that's actually really interesting. So, obviously, we did surprise this um, enemy force here. But it's very interesting to see the long lance is actually launched at 8,000 yards. So, uh, I mean, this is obviously, this, some, this is something that doesn't actually uh, happen often. And due to the fact that the allies, for the most part, obviously have the radar, which is, uh, yeah, quite an irritation because obviously the allies will know where coming or detect us out a uh, much further range. Um, are your ships firing or what? Six to eight, eight inch guns? Yeah, definitely. I think when it comes to it, they just go overboard. It's like, it would be dead, but yeah, they want to make sure it's dead. I mean, in fairness, we did have a torpedo uh, squadron, torpedo bomber squadron that, like, hit a uh, cargo ship with five torpedoes. Something else just hit a mine there. Something's hitting mines. It definitely sounds like mines. Something's going on here. There's some uh, fuckery afoot there, but I definitely heard something like mines. Uh, if you have nothing uh, that hit a mine last turn, it's certainly something I lied. Yeah, I swear to god we just heard, like, two mines go off there. Which is really interesting. I don't believe you've made any offensive minefields. Uh, which is actually accurate. So what that leads to is, um... Probably something in the region of maybe... Well, we know he has uh, submarines around, uh... King J. We know he has a uh, submarine or two around Truck. Um, he has submarines elsewhere around Japan as well, so maybe something off the coast of Japan, probably Japan, due to the amount of submarines there. Um, and we do have a fair amount of mines around, like, Nagasaki. I don't remember if we have mines around Shanghai. We'll have to take a look at really mine that area. Like, mine in Tsushima would be really nice. I should try and really bar that entry there. Hmm. Something just hit a mine. Something is definitely hitting mines here. I don't know what the hell it is. I'm hoping it's not ours, but something's definitely, definitely getting hit. Isn't the max range or max speed about 24,000 yards? I think it's something in that region. It's something usually around 20,000 yards. Shinwa Maru sinks. Okay, so that was awake. Okay. Now, it might have been from the uh, cargo ship over there. So we do rescue 72 men there from Izuru's second SLF. Now, that's a shame because we might have lost quite a few men there. We did have uh, elements of the Maizuru second SLF on board that ship. I mean, they've had uh, a couple hours to get off the actual ship there. I'm hoping that a few of them did make it off. But I can imagine that the actual equipment is probably more than likely lost. Okay. So it looks as if we have another fast transport making it here into Mersing, which is quite good. Um, ideally not too much in the way of uh, casualties. Okay, so another 81 casualties there. Not as bad as it was last time, but at least an additional few reinforcements uh, make it in here. <laughs> Should mind better on business, yeah. You're goddamn right. That makes sense. Uh, he can't match you right now in a pitch battle, so you could be aiming to go after your ship. And... Yeah, that's unfortunate. Mines are bloody expensive. <laughs> Ooh, that's some, uh, that's some ship talk in there, Paul. I'm loving it. I don't know. I'm hoping that we'll be able to figure out what's gone on once the turn ends here. And, of course, we're still under the expectation that there is some sort of raid to, uh, to come to the Marsh Islands, at least as we suspect. Right, moving into engage. Uh, 57 guns there. I'm really happy that our actual destroyers and torpedo boats aren't actually being hit by any of these guns. They may just not have the range. Now, ideally, it does expend some of his actual, um, torpedo missiles there, so that is S-40. 
S42 bottom in out there. It looks like we are attempting to actually engage the submarine here, but I don't think, um... Yeah, it doesn't look like we're spending enough time there to really engage. Obviously, they're not on the mission of anti-submarine warfare either. Um, I mean, this is it. The destroyers and the torpedo boats are really, really handy in this sort of role. Due to the fact that they're very maneuverable, very small targets, and the destroyers are actually fairly well armed. I mean, the torpedo boats. I mean, the thing is, he's not going to be too keen to actually challenge that force, because um, he could probably take it out, obviously, with uh, some uh, larger ships. That's, uh, that's without question. But you've got to imagine, if they get those torpedoes off, that's going to hurt. Okay. Two allied ships, three allied ships, four allied ships, seven allied ships, okay. Five allied ships. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, um... Speak of the devil and he shall appear. No. Yeah. Yeah, that appears to be American carrier force. Okay. Yeah, these are definitely American carriers. This will be a fun time. Now, we're not too far away from Tanawa here. Son of a bitch. I mean, that was the one I feared more than anything, Tanawa. Ah, uh, yeah. We knew it was coming. I mean, Tarawa was the area that I really didn't want to be hit. We had it set out about 20 there, Carl. It's one of these things, it's like we don't... I mean, this is it. I don't want my uh, Hexis Cave Force to take much of a bashing. Um... I believe I call this. <laughs> I think we've always expected it at some point, haven't we? We've always... I think we've expected something, but... We've got to look at the positives. We'll discuss those, obviously, after the pain has settled. But we'll see what happens. Okay, small sweep there. Uh, Kiributai can move. Yeah, we've expected something like this for a while. I suppose at the end of the day, at least the uh, curtain has finally fallen here, and at least we know where our enemy is. I mean, this has been something that we've um, really been struggling for the last last month, really, to figure out is where the American uh, the American carriers are. Oh, okay. Well, that's that could have gone significantly worse. There, I think I might have actually forgotten to uh, change that mission. I okay. We'll say that one was an oops there. But three bombs lost, that's not too bad. Okay, we are doing damage over here. I mean, this is it. The only issue is here that, um, obviously, all this... Uh, wow, 20... Uh, 21 damaged here. Fuck me. Uh, this surely can't be accurate, right? This can't be accurate, surely. And 21, 139 WH3s damaged here. Uh, one destroyed on the ground. 14 Blenheim 1s damaged. That's... That's really nice. That's actually really nice there. I mean, that surely, um... That surely can't be right. Interesting. Yeah, we'll double-check uh, the kind of ones. I think that's the issue. Sometimes we do miss these things. I suppose that... Um... <laughs> yeah, we'll just call it a suicidal commander. But, I mean, three bombers lost. That's not too bad. Right, here we go. What is he hitting here? Yep, Tenryu's gonna go down here. And the issue is I have two troop transports over here. Okay, so, he's hit me in the one spot that I really didn't want to be hit. And, um, yeah. I think it's safe to say that the light cruiser Tenryu is not going to make it out of here. We do have a destroy here, but it's probably going to go down. Yokoyama. Hmm. We'll avenge these losses. So what do we see here then? F4, F3A Wildcats, F2, A3 Buffaloes, F4, F3 Wildcats. Right. Buenos Aires Marie, uh, Maru takes a hit there. And just after she avoided the submarine there. Hmm. 
Okay. Massive explosive with that. Yep, so this hat, this is going to be um, a good turn for him, I suppose. It's one way of striking back at me. But this is, uh, it's not too bad, guys. Don't worry about this one. Now, he does actually have some combat air patrol, but we don't obviously have combat air patrol down at Talawa due to the fact that there's no um, airfield established here. But the way to take a look at this is obviously, um, okay, so he's revealed his carriers now. We do see them being escorted by a large force over here. There's 45 SBD-3s, 44 SBD-2s, 35 TBD-1 Devastators. Now... Granted, that's a large force. But I don't think that's like all four carriers. I think that might be like two or three of his carriers here. It doesn't seem like a very large force. I mean, uh, that sort of number is like at least two carriers, maybe three carriers. Yeah, Takashima goes down. Okay, so let's see the actual damage here then. So Tenru does survive here. Five bomb hits, heavy fires, heavy damage. Um, yeah, quite a lot of ships hurt there. Yeah, the only... I mean, that's one uh, that I do hope survives, the AV. I mean, these uh, troop transports being hit does hurt, but we'll be able to avenge this. Uh, Tenru classes the oldest front line, uh, like cruiser. Oh, that's a shame. That's three carriers worth of planes. Yeah, it definitely doesn't seem like four carriers, which is an interesting result in of itself. Okay, so the B-17's coming in here. Hmm. Now, the way to look at this is, of course, we have taken a few losses there. He, I mean, I'm not happy about losing the troop transports, but we can, um... I'm just glad that it didn't hit us in the, um, vitals. I mean, that, that hurt, but we had moved out some ships from there. Uh, we'd have moved more out from there, but it was really a consideration of fuel, I suppose. Maybe we should have been more prudent, uh, but we'll see. But, uh, what leads me to think here, then, is, uh, what's his next move? What is his next move? I mean, if that is two carriers, right, let's let's go with the assumption here that uh, that's at least two carriers. I'm going to say that's either two or three carriers. There's another one potentially out there. There's got to be another one out there. So whether there's uh, two carriers that are going to be hitting the Marsh Islands, whether there's going to be another carrier around, but there, there's not all four carriers there unless they didn't all actually launch there. So something, something's a foot here. Some fuckers a foot. I'd imagine we'll probably lose those ships there in uh, Tarawa. Now it's actually rather brave of him, actually. Ooh, yeah, Justin, you kind of just missed something really big. We have finally uh, discovered the American carriers, but unfortunately, our reconnaissance didn't actually give us the prior information. Uh, it could have been far worse, man. It could have been far worse. We've taken it. I mean, the things, uh, but I don't want to lose here. Yeah, Tenma goes down. Aishiro goes down. Uh, maybe the other ones might survive a little bit longer, potentially tomorrow or the day after. Yeah, H6K4 destroyed by the Combat Air Patrol. Okay. Right, we'll take a look at how we can actually respond to this. So, he must have slipped out of Pearl Harbor some days ago, then. We need to figure this out here. We need to figure this out. Now, he's got some, um, assets over there. Are we looking at a second, uh, strike here? Hmm. Maybe, maybe a second wave. Right, we do have a fair few number of uh, submarines moving north. So what we need to do now is we need to obviously do a lot of theory crafting. Like it hurts, it does hurt. I suppose at the end of the day, it's like um, he's struck a blow there. Right, yeah, twenty eight six and twos there. Oh, I guess they're going too low there. Uh, he's after the torpedo boats over here. I wonder if they're using bombs. It looks as though they're using bombs here. Right, ideally we can hit them on the way out. Yep, 5,000 feet. Hudson damaged. Hmm. Hudson damaged. Uh, one driven away there by defensive fire. Okay. You know what? I find it... I really don't know what he, he stands to achieve at Tarawa. It just seems like... It just seems like a retali uh, retaliatory action uh, just for the sake of it, to be honest. He's going to sink some ships. Yes, as he did. He did sink some ships there. 
I mean, obviously losing the uh, Tenru and losing the uh, Destroyer is going to hurt. I mean, it, it's not going to hurt us massively. We do have an overwhelming uh, superiority of surface ships in that area now. Not specifically in the Tarawa area. But it's interesting. I honestly thought he might have been heading for um, the Marshals. But he's in an interesting location now. I can imagine why he's gone for Tarawa. And I'm glad he's not hit the airfield, actually. And what we'll do is actually transfer the H6K4s out of there that can get out of there. I mean, I know he's going to be uh, more than likely looking to pull back in the turn to come. But what we'll do here, then, is we need to take a look at um, how he's arrived at this location. We need to look at what submarines we have in the area. We really need to try and um, interdict his path back. And the question is going to be, is he going to be leaving the area? Wow, our zeros did not do very well there. We didn't take any losses, but they weren't being beaten up by the actual uh, um, defensive fire. But we do destroy a few Hudsons here. Not too happy about the actual results of that. Right, 6k for the 3 1Bs. Wow, one immediately shot down then, it seems. Yeah, he's really running low altitude here. And Tanawa ensures he cuts your 7 strike force. It's a dangerous situation. We do have a lot of assets, uh, logistical assets, but we will have uh, Kitabutai moving north. He knows Kitabutai is going to be moving north now. We do have islands nearby that we can attempt to uh, seek salvation from. It's a really interesting thing. It's a really interesting move. I don't know if it's the right move. Ooh, something just got a hit there. Oh no, uh, she missed that. Okay, so we destroyed another Blenheim. Uh, another Blenheim destroyed here. Two damaged, two damaged. No, you're right, Infinite. But the thing is, obviously, fuel's a consideration. And we didn't know where the attack would be coming from. I mean, hindsight is fantastic. Okay, Kamoi goes down. That's a shame. Yeah, he's aware of uh, 4 carriers. Honestly, I didn't think he would have gone for the raid here, considering that he didn't know the location of 2 carriers. Because he could have gone into this and we could have had, like, 2 carriers nearby. But it's an interesting one. Very interesting. Okay, so we have the deliberate attack over here at Wenchao. So that is three divisions, the 39th, the 22nd, the 116th. It seems the strongest force in the enemy is the 100th, uh, 100th Corps there. That's the one to deal with. Now, I don't think it'll fall this turn, but perhaps tomorrow or the day after. Possibly this turn if we are lucky. We do have a lot of AV here. I mean, this is his uh, southern bastion for the most part. At least within China. Yeah, I'm going to assume this will take maybe two, three days. We do reduce the fortifications here, so to zero. Uh, 1,437 casualties, 969 casualties there. Yep, uh, we do destroy 29 guns over here. Uh, so this is going to take some time. Maybe two days, maybe two to three days to actually destroy this uh, city here, but it will fall. If it were a raid, he would either be heading north to the marshals for another raid or back east of Pearl. He knows Kitabutai is moving north. If you intend to intercept him, I suggest you move east or not. Um, yeah, no, you're right, Ben Infinite. But the thing is, I don't think he has all of his carriers there unless they've not all launched. But I still think it's one of these things where he's a little... It's very aggressive, but I suppose you have to be an aggressive admiral, don't you? Uh, we are going to be heading towards Truck, but obviously we'll uh, move in a path that will ideally protect our ship into the north. I mean, we knew this was to happen, but the thing is, this east obviously draws away. Okay, a little bit of attack of my band over here, so we do have elements of the 194th Tank Battalion. Yep, yeah, and my band is uh, captured here. Yep, yeah, the 194th surrenders there. I don't think it was much of a fight there. Yep, yeah, that's 44 vehicles destroyed there. One unit completely destroyed out uh, for no casualties here. Very good, very good. There we go. Okay, so an interesting turn. Not much ac uh, action from our own submarines there, but we'll see. I think in reality, we'll take stock of what the situation actually is, because uh, not all of the ships that have been damaged have gone down yet. Uh, so he may linger in the area. It really depends on how long he'll linger. I don't think cargo and cargo is enough clarity to sink three, uh, three US carriers. Uh, true. But it really depends. I think it's one of these things where um, I didn't expect him... I at least expect him to potentially delay. 
He might have actually suspected the two other carriers were potentially up by the marshals, but it's interesting. He knows all the carriers are in the South Pacific, he knows the CVLs at Borneo, he should know the Japanese carriers for this time of the war. Okay, so let's go over the situation then. Okay. Right. It looks like he has a main force here then. Right, okay. There might be three carriers here, there might be four carriers here. I'm going to say at least two to three carriers here. Uh, three CV task forces that are based up, uh, upon F4Fs, yeah. Three task forces, one CV per, yeah, okay. Well, that makes sense. Hmm. Now, I'm really quite glad this force moved out. Let's see what we have remaining over here. So, of course, we do have the ICW uh, missions over here. Now, I'm very happy it didn't actually hit the airfields. We do still have uh, H6K4s over here. Obviously, these guys, well, not all of them will be able to get out of there. Okay, has everything else gone down or is it actually in the port? So, these guys are on the port over here. So, a fair amount of damage, but obviously they are in port here. So, it's not as bad of a situation as it would seem. Uh, some of the ships actually managed to get out of this with no damage, or little damage. Um, okay, some of these m will probably go down next turn, but they'll still take some time. Okay, that force is heading out there. Hmm. Okay. Um... I wouldn't say it's, it's not going to be worth um, hitting that with the bombers there and the Marshall Islands, Carl. Uh, it'd be nice, obviously, it'd feel good to do it, but it wouldn't be a wise decision. Hmm. We have to look at this and we have to really assess this. Uh, what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to quickly save this and open it up in windowed. Well, actually, we'll go over some aspects of the turn and then we'll open it up in windowed so we can really get to grips with it. Okay, now, we've finally arrived over here at Taiping. At least one element has arrived already, which is the yard. Uh... What the fuck is with this? Okay, that's irritating. I don't understand why all those forces are set off at a later date. But one unit has arrived, so I don't know. That's strange. I assume they were all moving at the same speed, so I'm a little bit... Loss, uh, that's a loss of words on that one. We'll go for a shock attack as it seems there's only about 900 men here. We should be able to manage that. Okay, I was hoping the entire unit would be here, but nonetheless, we still have a unit over here at Taiping, and that is uh, what matters. So, Taiping will fall this turn. I was hoping that we could have had the um, armor continue straight on, but we will do. Can you press Z to show your sh uh, search arcs around Tarawa? We don't have search arcs around Tarawa, we have them on random. Okay. But at least we've arrived over here at Taiping. Um, it's it's one of these things, Carl. It's like, if we can get through, then we would, but it's not certain. There's a lot... There's a lot of combat air patrol down there. Okay. 169,000 troops. Right, elements are making their way into Chengchao now. Okay, so next turn, the rest of the army should arrive here. At least the rest of the army group should arrive here. Uh, so then what we will be doing then is in the uh, days after is we will be marching over here on Luoyang. Now, let's take a look at our forces over here. How did we fare? And uh, disruption isn't bad. Not too bad. We should be able to uh, go ahead and continue for a second day of deliberate attack. Okay. Right. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't matter how much combat air patrol he has, just night nice strike him. We could give it a go, I mean, if that is, um... Worthwhile. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it is... A prudent... Yeah, I mean, if you guys believe that a night strike is worthwhile, then we could go for that. We'll take a look at our options over here, then. Let's go over the actual losses then this turn. So, ships. Uh, ships sunk here then. So, we'll take a look at the last turn. Okay, so we do lose the Tenru, which is a shame. I, I wish I'd got her out of there because obviously I do like these light cruisers. And the Kamoi, that one, um, that hurts to lose. 
She's a, she's a nice ship, and obviously that is uh, precious. Oh, hello. Apparently Pike has gone down here. Type 4 mines, right. Okay, so it might have been the SS Pike then that was sunk. I think this was the one operating around, uh, around truck, actually. So at least that's one submarine down there. Okay. Unlikely to find him at night. Hmm. We can attempt a night raid. We do still have quite a lot of moonlight here. And don't hold your breath ho uh, hoping for a lucky night strike. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I could actually, I could agree with uh, potentially a night strike as at least then we're not going up against the majority of his combat air patrol if he does have any combat air patrol at night. Um, I could get behind that one. We do have airfields nearby, so I could look and actually base an additional naval bombers out here into these airfields. Uh, if we could go for that and maybe consider a night strike, then uh, that might be worthwhile. I mean, this was always the one that we didn't want to be here. But at least I can move out this search aircraft here. Uh, think about it, you might lose some planes with a night strike, but if you can hit a carrier, yeah. I don't... Di well... Did it actually hit its own mine, man? Sorry, is the Type 4 an American mine? Well, that's rather impressive. Okay, we do see some rings around here. Moving west, moving southeast. Okay. Now, what I'm concerned with is the logistics. Now, thankfully, a lot of them are over this way and uh, some distance away from Tarawa to a degree. So at least we do have some distance there. He is obviously going to have to move out this way if he wants to come and uh, grab these guys. Now, we do have uh, this force moving over here to Baker Island. Obviously, that's going to stay over here at Baker Island and potentially move down to Canton Island or even Funafuti. Uh, Funafuti might be the uh, wiser move here. It's at least safer. We'll see. Um, hmm. Possibly in the daytime, but the thing is, uh, uh, where are the Oscars? Uh, the Oscars are at KYJ over here. Combat air patrol could never hold off at airfield strikes. That's why bridge carriers were armored because they knew they would be swamped and actually worked well in the Pacific. Yeah. All oh, right, Type Four is an Imperial Japanese mine. Okay, that's cool. Um, they haven't detected anything in the south, it seems. Now let's take a look over here. Right, so Kitabutai has uh, merged once again. Now he does have detection over here. Uh, well, over the actual forces over here. What I do find interesting is it's only 5 out of 9, so it looks like that uh, detection might be actually deteriorating. Okay. Now, we do have fuel for a short journey. What we are going to do then is head over here to Luganville to actually begin to... Um... Well, we'll refuel over here to Luganville. Take on some fuel if we can do. We'll head north. I know more than likely he's going to be... I suppose the question is going to be, like, what is he intending to do here, then? If he head, he's, I doubt he's going to head south, but he could intend to move south. I mean, it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, strike here. I mean, of course, I did expect him to be hitting out here at Wake. I mean, Wake was the target I thought most likely. And then, obviously, the Marsh Islands. I did... Uh, we had mentioned Tarawa. We had spoken about Tarawa as a potential target some time ago. And it's the one I obviously did say that was quite weak. And I suppose it does make sense, because obviously it's quite isolated. To a degree. To a degree. Any info on the forces in Comac? Well, I mean, we just took a look there at New Caledonia. And I'm not seeing any forces here once again. And I'm pretty sure we are running our reconnaissance over here. And I can't say with certainty unless I saw it, but what I do find interesting here is that we do have 9 out of 10 detection, but I'm only seeing supposedly 3,000 units here. Uh, this amount of men has been up and down, so I don't know, it might be something in the region between three to 6,000 men here. If you night strike, put 50 naval search, 50 attack, no detection, no attack. Yeah, I'd sweep northwest towards Wake. That would be a good idea. Maybe we should uh, revenge strike Suva to go to the Marshals. Well, we need to have Kiributai head north. I suppose, to be honest, in a lot of ways, this is really... I know it seems... I mean, it's a bad thing, don't get me wrong. But in a lot of ways, it really has helped us out. The uncertainty has finally been... Well, lifted. 
I mean, that is the important part here. Now, it's hard to say whether this is the entirety of the actual uh, American carrier force. But this is interesting. This is very interesting. So, obviously, he struck a blow over here, but it's not a crucial, bro uh, crucial blow. It hurts, don't get me wrong. It's going to impair our um, functions in that area. Obviously, it would have been far better had he not hit us at all. But, um... He's not impervious to damage. He's operating out here... He's operating out here, obviously, in strength, of course. He's out here in strength. But he is vulnerable. He's no longer in his sheltered and practically at this stage invincible uh, port of, uh, well, harbour of uh, Hawaii. No. I suppose this is it. It's, um... Have you ever heard the saying, like, uh, be careful throwing stones in uh, glass houses? Maybe catch them on the return. They have to have a logistics, yeah. I wonder if the... Uh, we did see a build-up over here at Johnson Island. Now, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven submarines on this side of the marshals. We do have another couple over here. We have two over here at Palmyra. Hmm... Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe go crazy and strike Australia. <laughs> oh dear. Is moving Kidabutai uh, up an option you are considering without doing full speed? So, we'll do. We'll answer that question then. Uh, asked there by Joseph. So, if we were to obviously move north, let's say, uh, well, well, let's say we put a path towards um, Tanawa. At the end of the day, it's not going to work because obviously he's going to move out of that area. But let's take a look at that then. Now, that's 33 hexes, obviously we move at 4 hexes per day. My maths isn't particularly great while streaming, so uh, forgive me if I use a calculator. I am fairly, fairly lazy. But you know, I love this. I'm really... <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I am actually really excited about this. I mean, this is the stuff that gets me off at night, I swear to God. Okay, so this will take us about just over 8 days. About 8 days, 8 to 9 days here. Uh, well, you never know. Your SS could potato a CV if you get lucky. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so, about nine days they give or take. And he knows that full well. Yeah. Okay, what we're going to do here, then, just... Uh, just so we can go over what is actually happening here. But I've got to hand it to him. He's, uh, he's struck, and uh, he's drawn blood. He has drawn blood. Right, so turn 29, part 1. I'm just going to save it here, then. What I can do is actually open this up in the... Uh, Oh, four hexes per phase, then. So is it actually half the time? Right, okay. I always get bloody confused about that one. So... Right, so two phases per turn, then. So, uh, what was it? 33 divided by 8, then, technically. Right, so four days, give or take. Um, right, just double over this one as well. Not per day. Okay. Thank you very much there, Martin. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and open up the game on the windowed. At least then we can actually use the drawing tool, which does make things infinitely easier. Yeah, we'll take a look at trying to figure out a path that he may actually take back. If you sprint it small, yeah. So, I mean, obviously if we were to go at full speed, it'd be like eight hexes per phase then. I'm going to have to get used to that one. But thank you there, Martin, for also making me more, well, more aware of that. I suppose I've been falling into the trap of assuming it's like four hexes per day, when in reality it's actually twice that. Which wouldn't make a lot of sense, because obviously we've done things that I didn't expect them to actually arrive that day. So that does make sense. Okay, here we go. So, load of the game up. Right, what I'm going to do here then is actually bring up the drawing tool. Okay. Technically, you could possibly catch me in two days if you go full. I mean, this is it. I don't think it'd be worthwhile, because I know he's going to pull out in a day. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the evidence here, then. So, we are seeing... Free Task Force. Now... What I'm quite interested in is to actually see the fighter aircraft he's actually using here. That gives us a lot of things to actually... Um, work with that. So, it's a lot of information there that we've gained. A lot of information. 
<laughs> Wait, don't we strike in Pearl Harbor? <laughs> yeah, the draw tool's fantastic. Yeah, you're definitely a great guy at Infinite. Really appreciate all you veterans' help. Uh, KYJ won't have the fuel to refuel Kitabu again. Oh, don't worry, they're not heading to KYJ to refuel. They're going to be heading towards uh, towards Luganville, where there's fuel, and then from Luganville, we're probably well for the most part. I'm going to suck it from the um, transports, and obviously we do have a little bit of fuel there. I think we should probably have an oil or two in the area in the next two to three days, so we might have them refuel there for a little while, then move up and continue to refuel or refuel them on the move. Okay, so we see three CVs there. Now, question is four CVs. I'm going to say three. Possibly. I don't think he'd have four carriers here and then not use them. It would just not make sense, because obviously it does reveal a lot here. <laughs> What's that big yellow thing? <laughs> Watch it, okay. I also assume he has one force with oilers or like behind them. Yeah, you are absolutely right there, Roach. Uh, we do need to look for his uh, logistical train. Uh, if you got the fuel and you have not been generous with giving your base the fuel, you, so you need fuel. I don't know if I would say Pearl is invincible. Um, I think when it comes to Pearl Harbor, it's one of these things of where it would be a very, it'd be a very difficult task to uh, really engage in. It's one of these things. It'd be like uh, it's. It, I suppose it's. It's not quite the same. But um, it's not far off from, let's say, uh, THG Atakami in the Tokyo Bay area of Yoka, y like you know, Yokosuka, Yokohama, where we've always got uh, a great number of uh, assets uh, and logistics behind us. But obviously, it's not quite the same. I don't know. It might be like him striking as a potential like Formosa. That'd probably be uh, a closer comparison. Um, if your CVs can find oil as well, you might just win the war. <laughs> yeah. And this is it. Obviously, we do need to look after the, uh, well, hit the logistical train. Now, the question is, um, I don't think it'd be wise to send submarines directly to his force. So I think what we need to do here, then, is attempt to find submarines that do have um, search aircraft. Use those bad boys to try and preempt his actual movement. I'm going to say the best case scenario here, so this might be a little bit strange, but the best case scenario here is he spends another day, or even better, two days in the area. Uh, Yorktown arrival is early January, I think. Uh, he'd have to sprint the whole way. Uh, we have, like, uh, predetermined arrivals. I didn't really, I didn't actually know random arrivals was an option. That's kind of cool. Uh, this, uh, can't can you imagine getting uh, Yamato and, like, <laughs> super early? No, they make a massive difference. Pretty kind of cool. Uh, good thing we're not dealing with F4 Phantoms, yeah. The subs in your mobile forces need to focus on the Oilers. Yeah, what we'll do here, then, in, is we'll look at what uh, submarines we have, and we'll send them on a uh, sort of path that may preempt his retreat. Uh, but what I'd like to do is actually uh, look at sending our submarines to the bases in between Pearl Harbor. And obviously his uh, carries here. And of course, I doubt he's going to move himself. But it, it could happen. It really could happen. It's really interesting. There's a lot of options here. But the best case scenario is... Well, yeah, let's let's go over these options then. So, let's go with option one. My god, I wish it was easy to write with this. So, let's see remain. So, this is the first option here. So, the question comes down to... Okay, so he's uh, got his force over here at Tarawa. He's struck out and he's hit the ships over here. Now, he knows he hasn't destroyed them all. He's obviously uh, inflicted a, a quite grievous blow and they're probably likely to sink uh, due to the damage. Or, if not, they're going to be um, out of action for a while. Now, the question is, does he retreat? Which would be uh, probably the most sensible option. But is it the option he'll go for? Maybe not. Maybe not. The best case scenario for me, in my opinion, is uh, potentially he heads north over here. If he heads north to the Marsh Islands, which is probably... I'd say this is... Um, right. Okay, let's just say option three is leaving, so three, two, um, one. Okay. He's going to go to the Marshalls, can't if those siblings there are uh, any hints, yes. I'd say that option two is the most likely. 
Option 3 would be the most sensible in my opinion. Option 1 would be... Probably the poorest choice he could make. Uh, like I said, uh, check a direct route from Tanawa for your ships and see what the route there. Yeah. And the question comes down to these patrol boats over here. We'll have to. We'll get them the hell out of here if we can do. At the end of the day, they might draw uh, some of his actual forces, um, well, some of his actual strike packages. Hmm. So, uh, this is it. About two of these options dictate him remaining in the area for longer. You keep saying he'll go north, but is there actually anything to hit there? Uh, yeah, he could attempt to try and, like, uh, damage the actual naval, the port infrastructure. Uh, he knows there are ships in the area. He has seen ships leave, but he might assume that he's actually missed some ships that are still in potentially port. Um, it's one of these things of... Uh, he might be looking for easy prey. Yeah, I'd say he'd probably look towards KWJ for the easy prey. I think when we discuss this, I and mean, we've been discussing this sort of threat for a long time, and it's real, it's really gratifying to know it's actually occurred. And I'm going to say thank you to Carl for pointing out the uh, report of ACV and really, really put us on the path towards this idea. And it has turned out to be uh, quite prophetic. Uh, maybe he knows that. Why is Shrike Tarawa? Yeah, I'd say the northern northern route, so option two is going to be the most likely. I mean, why strike Tarawa? Striking Tarawa is uh, probably the safest option. It, well, yeah, it really is the safest option. It's one of potentially the unknown, but then again, each of his options there were unknown. But uh, Tarawa is the one where he's pretty sure that it's isolated. He knows I'm not really going to have a lot out there. He knows it's a important base-ish, so he knows there's going to be some targets there. Uh, it's a shame to have lost those ships, but the uh, that is pretty much the pain. That's that's going to be the most amount of pain that we'll really receive here if we play our cards right and if we receive just enough luck and of course the blessings of the emperor. Uh, I don't know. I think he'll bugger off now. Then uh, then he's hit Tanawa for his easy prey. Okay, I like this soundtrack. So one second, let's turn the music up. Let's have a let's have a little bit of a moment. Okay. Yes, I'd go northwest from Tarawa to seize between Tarawa and Truck to wake. If we take a look at that route. Right. So here we go. We have obviously the uh, carrier task force here. So uh, let's take a look at the actual options here. Then. So we'll go with um, one, two, three. So. J. Hmm. I couldn't think of a third option really as a name, so I'm just going to go with the uh, guy in the hat. So, okay, let's go over uh, option one then. So if he moves uh, directly onto uh, Johnson Island, which is probably the best route for him, he knows I'm not going to have anything out this way. And we have seen him actually build up the logistics over here at Johnston. So it would make sense. So I suppose what we need to do here then is uh, look to obviously post a number of submarines out towards Johnston. Now we do have a number of submarines in the area that are going to arrive here. No matter what, we are going to arrive here at Johnston Island with these submarines before he can do. Uh, what we need to do then is uh, another possible route here, which I'm going to go over in pink, is the Palmyra line. So obviously the Palmyra down this way, we have seen there are tankers there at Palmyra. And uh, I think that's a real... A really big consideration because at the end of the day, if if they were tankers at Palmyra, what reason would he really have to have them there if he wasn't intending it to be something of a um, staging area? And I'm, I think Johnston is. Um, 
I don't know, I kind of think he might go for the Palmyran line. That's kind of where I think he might go. We've seen tankers down at Palmyra. Um, he knows I have little in the way of um, assets down that way. I think he might suspect that I will... I mean, he knows I have submarines around Johnson. He knows I have submarines around Pearl. He's aware of a couple assets around Palmyra, but not a great deal. I don't know, I feel like the Palmyra line might be the most likely due to the fact that, um, well, he's got tankers there. He could obviously have tankers and fuel over at Johnson. We have seen that he's uh, got some ships out there and some actual assets on the ground. Hmm. If you think attacking Singapore with unescorted bombers was bad, imagine three CVs worth of F1Fs. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. True, it's closer to the carriers, but the carriers are still at least a couple of days away. If he sets off now, then yeah. He'll avoid our carriers. I mean, he might head to Palmyra then, uh, attempt to head from Palmyra down towards like uh, the South Pacific and Fiji, that sort of area. It's interesting. Hmm. Right. We'll we'll take a look at what wedge you have then. So if we take a look at the um, the Palmyra line. Now I do have uh, two submarines over here to Palmyra. Okay. Luckily they're both undetected. That's good news. We do have these submarines here. Yeah, we'll work on both, obviously, due to the position of our submarines. That that one's a given. I mean, Palmyra is actually fairly close. I mean, let's take a look here, then. So, the distance to Palmyra is about 34 hexes. The distance to Johnston is uh, 33 hexes. So, they're both roughly the same distance here. So, let's go ahead and assume... Uh, let's let's go with the assumption um, that he's traveling at the same speed that Kiributi is, about 4 hexes per day. Well, sorry, not per day, per phase. So, let's say here, then, 8 hexes per day in total, uh, divided by 33... Well, 33 divided by 8. So that's about four days, give or take. Uh, was it 32 or 34 or something? 34 divided by 8. Yes, yeah, so about four days, give or take. Uh, right. Hmm. I mean, this is it. He knows, and he'll have this in his head, I imagine. And really wish I could actually figure this one out. I'd, I'd love to be able to actually see his reaction to see, like, to actually know what his, uh, his thoughts were. Uh, but I'm going to go with the assumption that, um, well, yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, the way I'd approach the situation is, I'd be thinking, right, okay, I know I've got a grace period. And he does have a grace period. He knows there is at least a day, at least one day, of which he has uh, free reign of the area. One day. And then he will retreat, or he'll head further north, or he might head, uh, but yeah. I'm going to say it's at least one day. Now, one day he might move to the, uh, he may move uh, one day to the north. Now, the question is, do we uh, do we deploy the G3s and the G4s to uh, these islands over here? As well as, obviously, KYJ. Do we deploy the bombers to these islands? He's aware that I do have G3s and G4s. He's aware of that. I mean, perhaps that might be one of his reasons for actually not moving on the uh, marshals. He knows they are defended to a degree. At least they are capable of causing him damage. Um, well, to be honest, I mean, it was one of these things that the Americans very much did... Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the British the British government offered the Americans, I think it was either 1940 or 1941, uh, they offered them the use of Singapore to obviously base their fleet there. Obviously, this was before the Japanese attack on the US. Uh, and they were given that option there. But the fear was from the actual ally, well, from the US command, was, uh, in a nutshell, they feared being tied to the area, and they feared uh, that uh, Japanese forces would actually harry, harass, and just in general strike at the American possessions and just the possessions in the Pacific while the actual US battle fleet was over by Singapore. 
so it's an interesting one. I mean, I, as you say, uh, just go for Pearl. I mean, it's actually a valid idea. Obviously, we can't do that, but it would be potentially a valid, uh, valid idea. Strike where the enemy is weak. And shine away where the enemy is strong. Well, and disappear where the enemy is strong. Uh, we have got to get into the head of THG. This is a naval offensive, so he can strike out and damage forces, facilities, spoil your plans in the Central Pacific. And this is, um... It, it, it stings. It stings. But it's not going to stop the um, operations in the South Pacific. He may continue actually due, uh, due west from Tarawa. So he might just go straight on. Which is a very interesting option. Very interesting option. Obviously we'll move our assets away. Assets away and he'll probably uh, realise that to some degree. Yeah. I mean, as far as it goes right now, I mean, what's actual progress on an airfield? If we had an airfield over here, it would have been much better, but obviously we don't have one, which is a shame. So 39% here. No fortifications. Uh, what do we have on the actual island in terms of men? Uh, so 1,229 troops, 2,664 uh, second line. Uh, not much in the way of actual strength, but obviously he's, I doubt he's going to actually have any land and forces. So 28, 48, 29, 41, 13, 20, 51. Okay. Interesting. Um, if somebody could be a darling and like, actually write down those numbers, I'd be really ever so grateful. Like, I would genuinely be quite grateful. Uh, yeah, hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, Roach is on there. And uh, to make the most out of the offensive, he has to strike of your arms to slow down your plans and to make you spend time fortifying. Okay. Yeah, you are right. Obviously, you want to be hitting the fuel here. Let's take a look at what we have behind the islands, then. So, obviously, there's Nauru Island and Ocean Island. Nothing on Ocean Island. Of course, we do have... I mean, that's a nice amount of resources at Nauru Island. I'd like to really get these out here. But there's only a patrol boat. Uh, we do have these assets over here. So, uh, Kishima and the Asaka Maru. Now, the 52nd got out of here a really nice time. It might very well be an idea to potentially strike towards Australia and New Zealand. Uh, I mean, if we, I mean, we know where his forces are now, so that does actually open up options to that degree. Uh, cheers, thank you very much, there, Carl. I'm oh, sorry. Do you want me to write it down? Uh, uh, sorry, um, I'll ho I'll hover over it. I'd write it down, but I've only got like an important like letter next to be in it. <laughs> I've got a Fitbit manual. I'll write it on that bastard. Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm, I think Carl's got it. So 28, 48, 14. Let's give Carl a moment. I appreciate the help, uh, help there, Carl. 20, 51, 15. 29, 41, 13. So that looks like, yeah, I mean, we are seeing numbers here that are pretty much bang on for about three carriers. And as Infinite says there, the fourth carrier... Uh, even if it was making full steam, probably couldn't have been the area. Uh, push on to Pago Pago and Suva as a strike. Uh, we'll not push over here, it's not worthwhile and it slow our response down. I don't know how accurate these numbers are, but that is somewhat encouraging. But as far as I can see here, it looks like Komak actually remains empty. Right. I'm half tempted to go for a day of... Well, let's see here then. So if I burn full speed... Um, I don't know if we'd arrive there, but I'm not going to bother with that. So it's a gratuitous... Uh, gratuitous... Ah, gratuitous uh, use of fuel there. We'll make it. Your best bet is to turn this offensive into an advantage. You know where he is and he doesn't know where all of your forces are actually at. Yeah... No, we can uh, we can use this. At the end of the day, yes, we have suffered losses over here, but uh, we can deal with that. I'm going to tell these forces to get out of the area. Question is, is it better to head north? Uh, actually, let's take a look at the weather report next time. That should unveil something. But we'll take a look at the current weather. Right. So we are seeing here, Werner. It looks like, yeah, extremely overcast. 
light rain, light rain, light rain. Okay. Right, thunderstorms over this way. Hmm. At least we can actually target our naval bombers down this way. Right, let's take a look at the range here from KYJ. From KYJ to this area is about 13 hexes, so well within our range here. And of course our level bombers have not been set to strike here, but in uh, ASW patrol mode. But let's see then. So if we were to put them to naval attack... Do I not gain the ability to set a search arc? Seems like that. Hmm. Okay. Now then. So the Oscars here. Their range is about 12 hexes. So they're actually just out of range. Just out of range. If they move north, they're obviously going to be within range here. And when your enemy has a spear thrust at you, you don't cut to the spearhead, you cut to the shaft of the spear itself. Yeah, so what you're saying there, Roaches, we've got to grip the shaft. We've got to grip uh, THG shaft then. Is, is that what... I, I think that's the message there. <laughs> oh dear. That does sound about right. <laughs> I'm sorry there, Roaches, but that's amused me. That has amused me. Okay. So what we'll do then is, um, if Infinite or Martin could give me an idea of how we should approach this with the night attacks. Now, you were saying about 50% search, but is that not a um, option for us at this stage of the war? Hmm. Yeah, girthy. It is a girthy American shaft. <laughs> Can you group the bombers into one massive strike? We could attempt to do so, but it's not entirely likely. Are you getting possessed by a demon at? Mate, if I had the cash to actually play 40k, hell yeah. It would throw him off his game, probably. Hmm. I suppose the way to look at it is then, we can set a defense up in this area. <laughs> See you later there, John Murphy. Have a good one, my friend. Okay, so, this option. It's a potential. But if he does move to the north, I don't... I think he'll want to move to the north. I think he will want to do that. But it would be... it wouldn't be a good idea. It wouldn't be good, because even as unlikely as it is for us actually to score hits on him, I mean, it could be done. It really could be done. But it's very risky. Very risky. Especially the day after. Maybe on the first day he could have hit the uh, Marsh Islands, maybe. But it's very risky, and that risk really increases day by day. I don't know if he will be as bold to go for the Marsh Islands. I just think it's... I don't know, maybe he will, maybe he won't. But it would be very bold. Maybe he is that bold of a commander. Maybe he's that bold of an admiral. It's honestly all to play for here. But I don't... I couldn't hand on heart say, yes, I believe he'll hit KWJ. I just, I, I just can't commit to that now. I just can't say, I believe he'll go to the... I don't believe it. I don't think he will. I think it's likely. I think it's definitely an option. But I wouldn't say it's the most likely option. 
So we'll go for a little bit uh, more theory crafting here then. Let's let's go over the potential, other potentials then. So, right, let's look at it this way. So we have the four cardinal directions then. So we have north. So yeah, we have east, south, west. Or as my granddad always uh, used to say, never eat shredded wheat. And I swear to God, I find that so, it's such a great saying. Okay, so these are the options here. You can go for never, or you can go for eat, or you can go for shredded, or you can go for weed. He's got to choose one of these bad boys. I fucking love that saying. It's such a good saying. <laughs> it's so old time, I love it. Okay. So, the northern option is defended. He knows this. I would be shocked if he didn't know this. A little bit out of how you do, my friend. Of the uh, Janfif. Uh, we don't know where he will go for the attack, but we do know where he has to return to. Yeah, you are right, Ben Roach. He has to head back to resupply, rearm. Well, obviously, resupply and rearm are the same thing, uh, but obviously, refuel as well. And he has to seek safety. He knows his position is exposed. He knows he's vulnerable out at sea, and he knows there's a lot riding on this. I mean, this shows, um, and this really does, this gives us a massive, massive insight into THG's mentality here. Absolutely massive insight. Because at the end of the day, this, this move is risky. Really risky. And he didn't have to do this. There's no reason for him to do this. None. Honestly, there is no reason for him to do this. He could have sat out at sea, he could have sat out at Pearl Harbor and just waited. Waited for additional carriers, waited for additional force. There's no reason, actual reason, for him to come here. It doesn't serve any grand vision. It's, it's a retaliatory strike. That's all it is. He's seeking to draw blood where he can. Of course, he doesn't want us... I mean, this is it. it it's, an, it's an operation to inhibit us. It's an operation to, uh, to interfere. It's an operation to cause uncertainty. It's an operation to really attack our psyche. That's what it is. It's not an offensive with a goal in mind, other than that of um, disheartening us. It's a moral attack. Yeah, he knew when our forces would be. But it's like, I mean, I, I can approve this attack. I can see the reasons for it. Of course, he comes here to Tarawa. Uh, he headed out to one of these other islands. It was either going to be Tarawa or it was going to be one of the other islands. It's never going to be one of them. And he knows they're isolated to a degree. He knows that they're not potentially capable of uh, striking back at him, obviously, unlike a carrier force could do. He knows where the Kiribu Tiger is, roughly. He knows uh, that probably he could make it here without carriers interfering. He knows this. But it's a lot of risk, because yes, uh, his, his strike has worked, he's hit us, he's caused damage, not as much damage as he probably would like, but obviously he's caused significant damage that will more than likely lead to the defeat of all those forces, the sinking of all those forces in the area. The uh, aircraft tender has gone down, which is a shame, I really wanted that aircraft tender because obviously they are fucking useful. But, to be honest, I, I think he's chosen the wrong target. He should have hit the airfield. Honestly... If it came down to the port... Or the airfield... At this point, I'm glad he hit the port. And I know a lot of you will be thinking, yeah, but you can just build new uh, search planes. You can just, you can build new aircraft. You, you build new ships, but obviously you're not going to be building any new, like, cruisers. You're not really going to be building much in the way of, like, destroyers and stuff like that. Of course, no. We're not going to be doing that. Because we can't. But, um... If he was to hit my H6K4s in the area, that would, that would cause me a lot of issues in the long run. Like, that would really cause me issues. Because then I'd lose a lot of my um, sight in the region. I'd lose a lot of my detection capabilities in the region. But the cases here... The H6K4s will be able to, for the most part, escape... Uh, without any losses. Obviously, the ones on the ground be pretty much up uh, for slaughter, uh, but that depends on if he's actually going to hit the airfield. 
<laughs> you should have gone for the airfield snap. <laughs> well, this is it. I, I honestly do think he should have gone for the airfield. I think it's one of these things where um, it would have caused a lot more damage, but the thing is that time is going to pass now. He'll probably be able to hit and damage some H6K4s if he even goes for the airfield at all. Uh, he will have a lot of information over Tarawa now, so he'll have a general idea of the strength of the base, he'll have a general idea of what's there, but he won't see the same amount of aircraft, and he never will again. Uh, no, of course there's no airfield on Tarawa, so... Um, that's a good point, actually. Is it even a mechanical option? Couldn't say. Couldn't say, but maybe it isn't, maybe it isn't. Uh, sorry, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I mean, if it isn't, then fair dues. But um, either way, if it isn't, then yeah, I'll, I'll take that. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to say no to a got a crown. Okay. So, God, how long have we been streaming here? So, we've been going for, well, just over an hour. And, uh, yeah, we could, we could easily spend a very long time on this. We'll return to this over here. But what we're going to do then is go through the other parts of the Empire and see the results. Okay. Detection here. No, I should know. Detection 10 6 0. Okay. So, I-169, depending on the endurance ship, I-169 can head back. How about over here by New Zealand? Five just, well, destroyed over there, so that is the cruiser force, perhaps. Now that's interesting. Okay, ship sighted five, apparently two battleships. Maybe those are large troop transports. Maybe those are heavy cruisers. They could be battleships, but I'd find that real. I'd find that extremely unlikely. But maybe. Ah, uh, right. Are these submarines spotted? They're not spotted. They're running a little bit low on torpedoes, though. But that's good information, Bears. We know he has surface assets over here. Hmm. It's a shame that we don't have any more information over Palmyra. No ship sightings out that way. How are these submarines doing? They remain undetected, and I find this so... I do think this is arrogance. Maybe not so much arrogance, but I don't think it's really wise. He should have assets over here to be running uh, naval search out here along his own coastline with no issues. So it does lead me to think that there's potentially not that much on the US coastline that is really necessary from at the moment. So I don't think he's paying much attention to it. Right, it's a shame about the KR-21s. I think, um, yeah, I must have forgot to turn them off. Yeah, I, I must have completely forgot about that one. I'm going to blame that on like, the near four-hour stream. Like, I think I was just a bit tired at the end of that. So obviously we'll set them to rest. Thankfully we didn't lose too many of them, so that's quite nice. He might be a little bit shocked by that, actually, so it might even throw off his thinking there, to a degree. But okay. Right, airfield attack, but just rest. The A6 and 2s, how do they do? They took a lot of damage there. A really, really large amount of damage. Wow. They shouldn't have taken that much. Obviously, we did shoot down some actual assets, but yeah. Not particularly happy about the losses there. Okay. But uh, typing will fall next turn. That's what matters. Oh, don't tell me I sent them to Georgetown. But then again, have they got to head to Georgetown anyhow? Whoops. I wonder if they've actually headed over here to Georgetown as it was a faster route, perhaps. Maybe. Okay, that's a fairly sized uh, blocking force there. Hmm. Right, how far from Kong are we? We're closing on Kong. So we'll be in this hex more than likely next turn, and then also be in Kukong. Give or take. Depend uh, depends really on how they're marching. They might be marching, well, maybe like that. I don't know. They're going to be marching however the hell they want. Uh, supplies moving up the river here, up the uh, Yellow River. Right, the 34th. Yeah, they're moving. It's going to take them a good few days to arrive, but they'll be moving. 
40th division. Yep, I'll take a look at the uh, air losses in a second. Actually, no, I suppose that's not too bad, Ben. Okay, so three aces and two zeros. Uh, apparently, he did lose uh, three SPD twos. Sorry, uh, yeah, he's lost uh, three SPD threes. That's good. Uh, that's good to see. Okay, five to AA, one to operational. Uh, three F1 over two peats, two on ground arms. Interesting. That might have been the uh, combat ever drop potentially over. I don't know. We'll have to check that one. But it's good to see that there's lost some SPDs. That's good. I apparently lost a B-17 over here, that's good news. An L-212, not entirely sure what that is. Hmm. Okay, top pilots. No, Kamehira is still our top pilot. Kamehira number one. Yeah, still number one. Still a few other potential aces to be here. Once they achieve ace them, then we'll have them sent back for the most part. Or at least at 80 plus experience and where we can spare them. We'll have them sent back to train new squadrons. Okay. 46,000 men here. Fair amount of men over here, but this could be tackled in the south. Well, in the center of China. Um, we have seen aircraft over here. Interesting. Very little detection there. Could do with actually increasing that. But at least we can see here then that, well, once we do actually uh, secure Wenchao, we'll actually have access to some additional heavy industry as well. The light industry would be nice too. Resource is very good too. And it's a, um, is this a port? No, is it? No? Yeah, it is a port actually. That's nice. Hello there, Emil. Um, unfortunately, I don't speak Polish. Maybe Czech? One of those, maybe? I don't know. But, yeah, if you ask a question in English, then do my best to answer. Okay. Is the L212 a um, fighter, or is it some kind of bomber, then? Ah, oh, sorry, a bit of a uh, cold going here. Well, a bit of a sniffle. Okay, let's see. Yeah, the great news would be able to avoid the river here, which is very good. Let's take, for example, then, so what do we have here, then? So we have the 41st, 36th, 27th Divisions. Yeah, they've arrived by strategic. The 12th Army is here as well. Fantastic. Polish, okay. Right, combat. There we go. So, about three days, then, for us to unpack. We do have 21,000 infantry here, 25,000 second line, 532 vehicles, 261 guns. <laughs> See you later there, Roach. Have a good one, man. Uh, so for those guys in the chat here, do be sure to check out Commissar Roach. Great guy. Definitely worth checking out. Right. I'm very happy that we'll actually have a headquarters here. That's going to make a nice big difference. Okay. Right, so what uh, are we looking at actually in River Crossing here? I don't think we are. I hope we're not. It doesn't look like a River Crossing. I know this flag gets in the way a little bit, but it doesn't look like it's a River Crossing. Ah, see you later there, James. So have a good one, my man. Yeah, I'll definitely do that in the future. I, I think in the future, then, obviously, when the alert goes out, then I'll know how to do things properly. But that's cool. I'm really glad that um, it works out, so that's nice. I'll, I'll definitely do that from now on, then. So that seems like it's a good, good working thing. Hmm. Okay. To be honest, it shouldn't take us too much, uh, too long to really get the turn sorted out. There's a lot going on, but it's not... Uh, okay, I need to take uh, put more of a garrison here. Right. Uh, yep, the 31st could be moved up. 31st, part of the 4th Brigade. Uh, could actually be formed here. Su Shao. Okay, that's cool. Oh, is he? Okay. 
go up there. Right. So I don't believe in instant bans as such, so I'm going to put that user in uh, timeout and obviously ban him if you're in a bit of a douche. You'll be douched. So that is your, I suppose, kind of a first and only strike, really. Well, technically first strike. If it was the only strike, then it would already be out. But you, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. Right. We are seeing increasing amounts of uh, summoning activity over here. It looks like it's actually moving into the Yellow Sea. Now, the Yellow Sea is one of these things where it gets a little bit harder for us to uh, sort of track him down. But I suppose what we need to do here then, because this is obviously economic warfare, uh, the resources are one obviously that we do need to obviously keep moving into Japan. We can do this through a different number, of, well, a few shipping lanes. It may be worth our time then, potentially to turn off resource collection at uh, Port Arthur and have it actually move down here to Fusan into Korea instead. I mean, Fusan would be the safest option. Um, a trickle of resources is okay. Uh, I do have a decent stockpile. I mean, obviously I don't have an infinite stockpile of resources. But it's one that will last. At least for the foreseeable uh, time being. Until we can really sort out this uh, situation with the bloody submarines here. But this is something that is going to be just a fact of life for us. Uh, how is the road to singers? Well, the 41st Infantry Regiment has arrived. I mean, it's a shame that these forces didn't all arrive at the same time. I honestly thought they would do. Uh, they shouldn't take too long. I mean, these guys, yeah, just about halfway. Uh, what I'll do now then is, well... They'll, they'll head out. It's not going to take them long, but uh, we will capture Taiping. We are going to go for a shock attack next turn with the Fort First. Uh, these guys, fair amount of fatigue. Well, decent amount of fatigue, so we can rest them. But what we do then have is all these forces available over here, which then can obviously move out. Right, so I do have the 32nd uh, Field AA Battalion. Uh, we'll have them obviously set up shop over here. Worthwhile, then at least we actually do have additional AA. Now, 32,000 men over here. Additional men did arrive over here. Yeah, these guys are setting off back. Uh, we did bring additional elements there of the 124th. Yep, there we go. Uh, actually, fair amount there. Fair amount. I think it was the third element. Yeah, I'm going to go with the third element. There we go. Uh, still some elements that could have brewed. Yeah, that's good. So we've actually increased the amount of guns that we actually have here in the area. Okay, these guys are planned for a different location. Uh, we'll tell them to plan here for Mersing. There we go, that's 33 planning. Now, we have 2,783 infantry, uh, 1,972 on the second line. Uh, what we'll do here then is... I, I don't know, I don't think... I don't know. I think the time for the Battle of Mersing has really passed a degree. Maybe. Six units here. Right. A few ships over here in port. Hmm. Okay, we're not seeing anything in the local area. Not to say that it isn't there. Yeah, okay, so those ships are in port here. 1,500 men. About 19, yeah, something in the region, about 2,000 men there. Uh, our landing forces are setting out. One of them has been detected, which is worrying. But we should be okay. I don't think there's actually forces in the area to, uh, to really land a blow there. Ideally not. Okay, engineers setting off, that's great news. Okay, let's take a look at the truck area. Right, the tank is unloading the fuel here. Okay, the AMC Saigon Maru and uh, Sanuki Maru has arrived. Obviously, that's quite important. Uh, the 8th, yep. Right, patrol boats. 
Okay, I think these were the guys carrying the actual... Yep, so the 11th Fleet... Yep, the 11th Air Quarters... So the 11th Air Fleet Command uh, has arrived here, which is fantastic. So they bring additional aviation support here, which is amazing. That is a great deal of increased aviation support now. Very good, very good. I can actually really work with that. Now, the good news is I can actually base the H6K4s probably out here with, uh, well, yeah, pretty much safety. Okay, naval construction, that's a lot of engineers, nice vehicles there too. H1 engineers, free vehicles. I mean, obviously, that'd be taking a lot of engineers and a lot of vehicles away from truck, uh, which is one of these things where I obviously do need that, but um, I could do with the engineers south, actually. Okay, 90. Right. Now, I'm moving the uh, naval support from K1J. I think I will have it moved out from there. So that's the 24th. Sorry, 6th fleet over here. Is it 6th fleet? Yeah, there we go. Elements of 6th fleet. Um, only 72 troops at the moment. So it takes a very long time to obviously move out, but that should be enough. Rearm level 2975. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead then. What could be manual here? Right. Okay, so to rearm the 40 centimeter slash 45 free YTs, uh, which I do believe are the guns of the Yamato. Let's uh, go ahead and double check that to be sure. Okay, so the Yamato. Her guns... Oh no, they're the 46 centimeters. Okay. 45 T-94s. Where the hell are they in the book? Have I just seen, not seen them? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong page. Okay. So, yeah, the 46 centimeter guns. I was looking at the wrong side. It like, turns out there's a little bit on the left side of the book. Yeah, so... Phew. To rearm the Yamato's main guns would be 6,440 um, points there. No. I'd need a port 7 with, I think, about 188 naval support. Jesus Christ, it's like, <laughs> that's incredible. They could be rearmed at a size 1 port if they had 1,285 naval support. So that's impressive. <laughs> wow, sir. Okay. That's cool to don't mind. 30th of May. Not too long until we actually get Yamato. Really, really looking forward to having Yamato. Should make a great escort. Okay, so 5th of April here. We'll have uh, Shoho, so that's another light carry in 21 days. Really good news. Her speed's very good, should be very useful. It might be wise to do a naval strike on the Singapore Task Force if it's possible. Uh, perhaps so, but I mean, it's one of these things of the actual AA and flak. I mean, obviously, I don't have a huge, huge amount of bombers. Uh, so I think we need to. I don't know. We need to try and avoid losing more if I can. I mean, obviously, I was a bloody fool who lost a couple last turn due to the Kent who turns something off. But hey ho, what do you know? Or is it a little too high and a little too low? Uh, something, something like a hurricane. And uh, I think she's made out of candy. <laughs> okay. Good, obviously, yeah. Uh, this will help to replace the losses we took. Not replace them, but it'll help. I-28. She's going to be very handy. Okay. Sea plane tender, very good. Right, looking forward to when we actually gain the landing ship dock. Uh, so we'll have Yun Yo, Un Yo, how the hell, hell, Onion, whatever you want to call it. Not particularly too far out. Yeah. Well, it's one of these, it's. It depends, it depends. We'll consider it, we'll definitely consider it. Okay, so it's twenty. Uh, sorry, 10 days until the second raid in uh, Sentai arrives, so that's 27 aircraft there. I can make use of those. 21 days, yeah. Uh, and Manila 
In 27 days we'll have a squadron due for the A1 vowels. Okay, that come in handy. Hello, what was that? In 41 days we'll have our first unit of H8 K1 Emilies. Now these are amazing. Really, just phenomenal range there. Phenomenal. I mean, her normal uh, operation, uh, well, operational range is 24 hexes. Her extended is 30 hexes. That's bloody distance. They're actually fairly well armed. Well, protected. Okay. Bloody K-27s. Another squadron. Okay, let's see when it comes to level bombers. 36 days. 6-9, okay. I'm not really getting that many bomber groups. 86 days until a 8672 squadron arrives. Okay, let's take a look at our ground reinforcement schedule. Uh, that was group, sorry, let's take a look at the ground. 10, right, quite a few troops in about 10 days, so that's nice. Tokyo and Saipan truck, good news. Right, that's naval, the naval construction unit over here would be very handy. Okay. So, I know it seems like a very... I don't know, obviously it's going to seem like a bad turn. It is going to seem that way. But I really do think, in a lot of ways, we have uh, a lot of information here that I can really work with. And I think in some ways, well, the curtains finally dropped. The carriers have been revealed. We've got... I mean, they're in a very interesting position, because it's like, obviously, they can cause damage here. I think it might have been hoping for more as well. At least, I'd be hoping for more. At the end of the day, yeah, there's a lot of ships over here, but he's going to have to spend another day, potentially, uh, to hit these ships, so it's another day when he's not hitting something else that's more vital. Kidabotai is already on her way north now. She's going to be heading north. Right, so we'll stop over here at Luganville. So we should arrive there tomorrow, then, if this is... So I think uh, green, then, must be the first phase, and then yellow must be the second phase. Of actual travel. Give or take. Something like that. So I might have actually been bloody cut myself short than on travel distances. Hmm. Interesting. That's something to bear in mind. It'd be rather incredible if it turned out that way. Right. Yep. Supply is here. Good news as well. Supply is getting fairly low. Ah. Fantastic. The 15th base force has arrived. Good. You produce bombs every turn, so they can be replaced if you lose a few of the stage of the water would hurt him. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to the actual issue of pilots, really. But uh, we'll definitely consider it. Okay, the Maizuru has... Um, I think they've actually been fully loaded. I think they're just loading supplies at this point here. Oh, no, there's still some elements here. So that's fine. Another day, then. Another day. But that is now 1,400 men. It might even be potentially just worthwhile just to set off this turn, just to get them bloody moving. Maybe. As well, at least we actually have the men moving over that way, then they can actually begin marching. Hmm. Can definitely discuss that one. There's a lot in that. Hmm. Yeah, we'll consider that. I may have them dispatched, but then again, it's like one of these things of like... So, they're loading my Zuru, which is actually technically not on the... I wonder if they're actually just loading the supplies then. So, I'm not seeing them actually... Well, I'm not seeing them actually on the base here. Right, so... Right, cancel. Yeah, I think they are fully loaded. Uh, with the men, anyway. Uh, question. 
Why do you put aces back to train new pilots? Uh, the, re the way it works is basically, let's go over here then to um, find a squadron where there might be one, maybe over here in China, perhaps. Maybe the 30th, okay. Uh, yes, okay. So basically how it works is like you see all these pilots, I mean these guys aren't too bad, but uh, they are gaining experience and so they do need to train. But a uh, actual squadron commander with over 80 experience is really good. It really, it, he helps speed up the rate at which newbies actually gain experience. So it's definitely worthwhile. And at the end of the day, it's like, it'd be great to have these very experienced pilots on the front lines, but they are vulnerable. So if they actually do survive and they gain enough experience, then it is definitely worth it to have them sent back to the rear to actually train additional pilots up to a greater standard sooner. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. Do not unload, okay. So the 15th obviously needs to be moving here. Well, obviously they need to be unloading. Right, 15th. And the 15th, there we go. Load as fast as possible, really. I get that, but my main question was, why are aces? Well, it's not that aces are better. It's just, I mean, I'm saying aces just because it sounds cooler, really. But they don't have to be aces. I mean, really, just anybody with 80 plus experience will just work just as well. So it's not like it has to explicitly be like that many. Okay. Now we do have uh, Hayamoto, Hayamoto, Haya, 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 Haya. Yeah, so we do have Hayamoto over here, which is good. So at least we do have 5,797 units of fuel. Uh, that could be in Kiributai potentially by tomorrow, give or take. Now, we do have the carrier strength to challenge and potentially defeat him in battle, but it's a very, very dangerous situation. See, the best case scenario is that you actually head north to the marshals. Right. Now the question comes down to, thank god this AFC wasn't hit though, so I would have hated to have lost that many men. They may still be able to make it. Okay. It's a shame I don't have an airfield here. Really is. Uh, comeback Invasion is when and with what? Okay, so the Comeback Invasion is going to be coming up this week. So I do have on its way already, we do have the Light Cruiser Katori over here. I'm really glad Katori made it out of uh, Tarawa. Would have been devastated to have lost her. Uh, so we do have elements in the Mizuru first SLF. So this is 112 infantry, one vehicle, eight guns, 207 uh, second line troops. So they're going to be the first, uh, first men really on the island. I'm actually going to tell them to actually plan for... Comac just in case. So it seems like Comac is actually empty as far as I can tell. We've been doing a lot of records and over here. I'm really praying that we haven't missed anything. Really praying. Uh, but we are going to land here. And then we'll begin the process of march from Comac to Numaya. And it seems like, I mean, this force seems to be something in the region of three to 6,000 men, give or take. Which is a strong force. Don't get me wrong, that's a strong force. But it's one that can be defeated. And, um, well, if we can get boots on the ground, we're in a very good position. Because we're actually able to then uh, take Comac as a base. I mean, I could take Comac and obviously take the base over here on, like, uh, Bellip Island. Um, I believe. 
and then actually build these up. These bases are actually really nice, they can be built up. I mean, obviously, air capacity of 3 here is nice. Uh, air capacity of up to 7 here is incredible, very large. Um, larger than potential over here at uh, Numea. Uh, but we do have a size 2 air uh, field over here and a size 2 pole over here, which is fantastic. Really great logistics uh, hub there. Now, we do have our force over here, so that is the rest of the Maizuru. Uh, Maizuru. So that's another 1,400 troops there, just under 5, 1,500. They're going to be sent this turn. So what I'm going to do here then is transfer. Let's see. I'm going to send the light cruiser Tatsuta, perhaps? Maybe, yeah. Uh, possibly, yes. Um, mm. And again, these light cruisers do come in handy. What's their cargo capacity? I do want to set up, uh, set up a like, fast transport mission, potentially. Um, I don't know. Depends. I would like to set up a fast transport to take control of these islands here and the island here, potentially, if that one does not fall to us automatically. But I'd like to take control of these islands. Might even just take one force and have it move there and there. Make it quite quick. The reason would be to actually control these islands so I can actually have additional like logistics here. If we can control this area, then that's going to be great. And then also make our push over here at Fiji. Um, hmm. We do have the supply in the area now to uh, keep the operation going. We've got fuel here, so obviously 5,797 units of fuel here. 5,558 units over here. We do have two summoning tenders, a um, aircraft tender, which is fantastic. So, yeah, there we go. 21 AV. Also, we'll have the base force. That's going to be, um, well, dropping off. Yeah, so what we can do then is I'm going to tell them to stop expanding the port for the time being. If I can tell them to concentrate on the airfield, ideally that will just focus our efforts then on the airfield. So that's what I need in the area, an airfield. Okay, but the actual submarine tenders are going to be very handy. Right, so... I'm going to say disband the force. Destroy mine super come in handy as well. Okay, so she's undergoing some light repairs there. The tank is here. That's good. We have to be careful of the fact that obviously this um, is not a large port, it's not guarded other than by the warship, so submarine attacks here are very possible and uh, could be potentially very dangerous. So we do need to bear that uh, in mind. But um, our logistics are finally arriving in the area. With the 15th base force we can really start to make a uh, good go at it. Uh, I do have elements of the 144th arriving here probably next turn. Yeah, then other elements of the 144th arrive in it maybe two, three days after. Okay. So we have another oiler, the Ero over here, escorted by the Yamakaze and uh, Kawakaze. Right, our uh, Kimikawa Maru has made uh, landfall here. Cancel loading. What I'll do then is have you disband here. Right, so if I take a look at uh, Guadalcanal, so basically Tulagi, we have 15 AV now. Good. Right. 5,000 troops over here, plus our equipment. So we have the 4th Infantry Regiment, we have the 3rd Mortar Battalion, we have another unit of Japanese Engineers. Very good. A few Engineers. Units undetected, that's good. Okay, Rabal. I need those bloody numbers. Right, so we can see that it does have some aircraft out here, so at least the reconnaissance is uh, revealing some information. Not a great deal. I wish I could know the troop numbers. <sighs> I 
Note to self in future games like, make sure you mind, KYJ. <laughs> or something like that. So that's a nice area. Yeah, just eight engineers here. Yeah. Right, bugger the fortification. Just focus on the airfield if you can. Okay. It might be that we um, move the naval bomber squadrons into this area because we'll we could have a shot at it. It's one of these of like, is it worth it to have a shot, or is it worth it to have something of a measured approach? We could potentially tell our aircraft to uh, not attack next turn, basically attempt. Um, I don't know, it, it's one of these, isn't it, really? Do we, like, have a go at it, and uh, there's a great potential that we could lose a lot of aircraft? Or uh, do we wait and see what happens the turn after, see if he heads north, but then we potentially lose the uh, chance to hit his carriers? It's it's one of these. I think it's going to... I think this episode... I, I'm going to say this turn's going to take a while. I think this is going to be one of the longer turns here. I'm going to say it's probably... Yeah, I'm going to say easily going to be one of the longest turns. There's so very much here to consider. So very much to consider. And that's really where the meat of the campaign is here. Let's take a look what we have. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Strider the carrot. Now, I do have the free jenks over here. Yeah, big risk, big reward. I mean, the issue is it's obviously not 100% uh, that will even strike the carriage, you know what I mean? We might strike at other ships, but obviously we'd put the fear of, uh, fear of Gordon to him. It's a real, really interesting um, possibility here. Really interesting. And honestly, it's one I'm really intrigued by. I think what we'll do is just see... See what people's opinions are. I think what we might do here then is... Um, I might have like a semi... I don't know, something of a podcast perhaps. Maybe one of, yeah, I might, I might do something like a podcast or something, like as a special episode or something. I think we might do that on, like, special occasions, or, like, when something big happens. Uh, so I could have, like, a couple people, I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to have to set the bar as having a decent microphone. Uh, then we could potentially have um, questions and answers, and basically a big discussion to try and figure out what the best course of action, uh, yeah, the best course of action actually is. Now, that would... Uh, that might be a good idea. Because we do have a few options here. Yeah, in for, in X. <laughs> yeah, in for a penny, in for a pound. I stayed before Haruna and Congo demand revenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, let's take a look at the options here. So, obviously, I do have these uh, float planes over here. I mean, they could be moved to these little islands over here. This one has uh, an airfield, but no... No aviation support. But it could operate. So the thing is, if he heads north, he is going to be uh, potentially hitting these uh, coastal defense units, which do actually have something. I have a decent mic on my son tablet. Yeah. At the end of the day, it'd be nice. I should try and get some uh, view interaction going, so that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I'll really consider the idea and see what people think. So what we'll probably do here then is I can have uh, these, I'll have some float planes actually sent down here, probably here as well, just to really try and uh, increase the areas where we might actually um, detect them. So show them that you're crippled. Like for example, I could have the Jakes over here sent to Baker Island, obviously they're not going to do too well out here, but it would be perhaps worth it for the short uh, time being there. I could even potentially have them loaded onto the actual cargo ships then afterwards. Right. Couple submarines over here. Obviously not too great on fuel. And this is obviously the big situation. 
Right. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the operations report, then. Sighted by the enemy. Right. PB5, PBY5, Catalonia sighted over survive. Yet to everything in port. Yeah, so the search H six K four may have destroyed by combat patrol. Okay. You have a Shiro converted to F1M2P. So obviously that's a uh, camera out bay. That's something I do need to bear in mind, actually. I'll have to check that. Uh, Taman Yamaguchi is now available for reassignment. Nomura. Why are these guys uh, available for reassignment? Who is leading Kitabutai? Okada. Okada. Hmm. Well, we're heading to Luganville, so at least we'll be able to uh, check into port there and potentially consider uh, changing the commander of the actual fleet here. If it actually proves to be necessary. Hmm. Definitely, definitely want to consider that. We'll see, we'll see. But he's a fair commander, he's not bad. He's not bad. Wait a minute, Kirishima? Was it Kirishima I just mentioned? Oh, Yamashiro, yeah, okay. But, I mean, in reality... It's not going to affect the operations of the South Pacific. I mean, we really are... For them. I mean, to be honest, I could move down this way. I could move down this way, if necessary. Uh, Kidabutai will be moving north. He could make a speedy run, maybe. Maybe like this. But that would be very, very bold, and I don't think that would be very likely. I think what we may do then is... Um... Let's see, so, Ponape. Right, so I do have only a little bit of aviation support here, obviously it's got to unload. Yeah, unloading over here. I'm glad when that AMC is actually available to go grab the rest of the GGG, my special base force. Right, you're still heading back home. These ADs are really nice. Destroying tenders, but they're, they're good. I might have the Ondo actually head into Ponape, due to the fact that she could actually pick up this fuel over here, uh, which would be nice, at least then she'd actually be able to do it um, on the fly, but then again it puts them in a position where it's going to take longer and they're going to be in danger of submarine attack. Okay, the Akashi, which is the very, very viable ship out here, is actually going to be a truck next turn where she can actually really, yeah, she's going to come in very, very handy, and she'll be able to help us to actually repair major damage. Okay. Uh, still a fair few vehicles there, but mostly it's support. We've got all the light tanks, and there's still some medium tanks here, but we could uh, deal with that. The great news here is we actually do have some very good transports here available now, which is great. So I'm going to do is disband this task force. Additional destroyers is always good too. Okay. Disband uh, patrol bot. Right. So we need to look at something that's obviously slow here. K 
cargo capacity I'm really looking at. So these are the Hushimis. These are actually quite nice, quite viable. So hose. How do they stack up in terms of durability? So obviously no armor. So 14 durability. 11 durability. Maneuvers actually a little bit lower, but they, they just seem to be a slightly tougher ship. How much do I need to actually load the rest of the tank regiment? Looks like I can manage that. So verified load. Yeah, looks like it can be managed now. And I could add in another ship there to just make sure the force can actually handle them. There's a little bit more spread across the ships. But I think they're actually loaded onto ships as it is now, so they're not going to be as likely to um, change are they? So what I can do here then is I'm going to put uh, Nagara in charge of escort in here. Doho. <laughs> Couple destroyers here available. Yeah, we do have a Toho Maru. Yeah, these are two oilers. Very good oilers. So, we do have the capabilities to refuel Kidabutai to a pretty good degree. Um, actually, yeah, at sea potentially. Which is interesting. Very interesting. Let's take a look at our men over here at Venom of the Philippines. Ah, oh, good. Okay, so an element um, of artillery has arrived here, so that is the second independent artillery, the Mort Battalion. So that's only 21 guns there. But fuck me, those are, those are some fucking big mortars. Holy shit. 150mm mortars. Jesus, that's a big ass mortar. That was a big ass son of a bitch. Yeah, here we go. So the Type 96 and the Type 97 150mm infantry mortar. That's a fucking big ass mortar, man. Look at the size of that son of a bitch. That's a big ass mortar. Big boy. The 9 mils. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that'd be nice. Okay, so the, the view is that they've actually arrived. I'm going to just put them on the fence here, because obviously we don't want them to do anything unless the actual divisions are doing something. So the 33rd, still a fair amount of disruption. Yeah, fatigue. So it's the 33rd, that's obviously disrupt... Well, actually, no, disruption's 11. Fatigue, 29. 6, 9. Okay, so... Maybe deliberate attack today, maybe tomorrow. What's interesting is he does have this unit march in south here. Now, I don't know, are they going to trigger a battle if they actually head into the area? It's somewhat hard to say, really. It might happen, it might not. Hmm. I do wonder. No. Mao Ban has finally fallen. That's good. Very good. I don't think it's actually a rail line, but yeah, so it's going to take some bloody time to move. And we do have the uh, tank elements unloading over here, so that's good. I can actually have them move up. Aviation units here, too. Hmm. Okay, Pirate, you've you've bloody lost me there. I don't know what the hell you're on about now. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a little bit lost on that one. There we go. Right, heavy cruiser and uh, two destroyers. Pretty, pretty good force there.
That was a surprising amount of damage, but I don't know if that was accurate. Okay, how goes our force here? Right, loading has been completed here. That's good. Insert weeb comment. <laughs> Okay, so we can make some really, really good time here. We actually do have pretty good range. It looks like if it is, in fact, first phase green, second phase yellow, then, um, yeah, we do have a lot of movement here. That is 2,400 member. It's even potentially likely that we could potentially land here. And it's unknown as to whether he'd have his naval bombers around this area, but it, it's it's possibly one of those risk-reward sorts of things. Could they really make it up there? Surely not. Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if they could make it all that way. I think if it was a straight line, then yeah, maybe. But other than that, nah. Infantry regiments moving. Okay, we do have some forces here. Second reconnaissance moving north. <clears throat> so that's going to be a couple motorized, a couple cavalry. It's not a large force, is it? Uh, Canada detachments obviously march on Iba. Ideally, we arrive before those troops get the hell out of there. Okay. Right, cancel the unload and get them a hell out. What do we have here then? So, 18 vehicles at the moment. I mean, they are packed actually strategically. Might be worth, yeah, might be worthwhile to have them. Uh, yeah, we'll keep them packed up actually. At least then they can move immediately on via rail. These units. Mm, they're marching to Manila. Well, they're moving to Manila. That's a lot of engineers there. That's a lot. Yeah, I might actually keep them on the uh, in this location, then have them move via actual transports down into the South Pacific. Right. I think what we need to do here then is use the. Uh, I'm going to say probably the G freeze against the American carriers if we do choose to actually mar well go down that path, as at least then we do have a bomber that. Uh, now, we have spares off, you know what I mean? We have like a stockpile built up, so at least it's not like the end of the freaking day if I lose a, well, lose a load. Let's take a look. Aircraft. In pool. Yeah, I have 63 G3M2s in the pool here. Twenty-five Aces and twos. 19k43 Oscars. I mean, the good news is here, then. So, obviously, if he moves north, really, if he moves one hex north, then, uh, we will actually be able to somewhat escort our forces in with KF43s. I suppose this is it. Even. 
even if just one torpedo makes it through to his carriers, then that's, that's going to hurt. I think he's putting himself into a situation here where it could really go... I don't know, I don't think he can really control what's going to happen here. I think it's one of these things of when it's, it's very, very much a potential chaotic situation here. I think what we're going to do here, fam, is we're going to call the stream to an end here. And then I'll, uh, I'll have a think about maybe doing, like, some kind of, like, podcast or, or we'll figure it out a way and then we'll figure out our future moves here. But I'd like to say thank you so very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an incredibly exciting episode here. I mean, things are definitely heating up, but that is, that's a very exciting result for her. And, uh, let's see how we can turn this to our advantage, really. So I think it can be done. I think it can be done. So until next time, thank you so very much for watching, and I do hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more of this, please do consider supporting myself and the channel. You can do this through a number of ways, such as liking, favoriting, subscribing, sharing, of course, the media here. And, um, yeah, always would be fantastic if, uh, if you guys actually had the funds uh, to consider becoming a Patreon backer. I'm really trying to think of, like, trying to get some kind of reward going for that. At the end of the day, I freaking adore you guys. I love the conversations that we're going to have here. But, uh, yeah. I do use these funds to actually go ahead and purchase new books. Uh, my latest book here. One second. Yep, so the latest book I picked up here. Obviously, I'm, I'm, st I'm not too far away from finishing War Plan Orange. And for the moment, I have purchased uh, War in the Far East. Storm Clouds Over the Pacific, 1931-1941, to by Peter Harmson. So, uh, this book is the first in a uh, volume in a trilogy, sorry, the book is the first one of a, in a trilogy that offer a more complete account of the Pacific War, uh, more than any of our previously published, while keeping a focus on the decade leading up to Pearl Harbor, Storm Clouds of the Pacific goes back centuries to examine the origins of the enmity, well, enmity between Japan and China, and trace the deep animosities that drove the immensely destructive war in the Asian, well, in Asia Pacific. It's one of the love hate relationships between East Asia's two older civilizations, conditioned by shifting geopolitical winds. God, I really read that one out awfully. I mean, that's the issue when I'm trying to like, read and just. I don't know, I can do other stuff, but apparently I can't do, read blurbs. So, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, so very bloody much. And I'd like to say, have a fantastic evening or day, whatever you're doing. Until next time, guys. Till the next time. Tenor Hanka Banzai.